Your site is nearly set up. I promise you're getting so close. The last thing that you really need to focus on and you'll be done after this is plugins. Plugins are an important part of your website and WordPress makes it really easy to use them. Um, what a plugin does is it adds functionality to your site that WordPress itself doesn't have. So WordPress is, serves as the frame of your website and then the plugins make it so that you can add additional functionality that you could specifically need for uh, your site. Some people might want to add a calendar or they might want to add a calculator. Maybe it's a design element. Maybe it's a form where you can take a survey. All of these different things can happen on your website, but will happen through using a plugin. Now, plugins are great. They add good functionality, but there are also some significant downsides to using plugins that you need to be aware of um, as you go forward building your site. The first downside of plugins is that it sometimes causes a bad user experience. Plugins can slow down your website significantly because the plugins are created by third parties. It's not created by the same company who created WordPress. And so you really don't know what the code of the plugin contains. And sometimes the code in the plugin is really heavy, it's very large, and it slows down your website. And one of the important factors uh, that Google looks at uh, for your website is its speed. And so having too many plugins can really bog down your website. So you really want to only have five or six plugins max on your website, especially when you're getting started. You really don't need that many plugins. One of the other downsides of plugins is that they do pose a security risk for your website. Now, not all plugins are dangerous. You don't have to be uh, paranoid about using plugins, but you do need to be educated and you do need to understand how to find plugins that are safe to use. So go to the back end of your website. You can see I have mine pulled up here and I am on the page where it shows all the plugins. So I'm going to click plugins, add new, and I'm just going to show you what you can look at to see if a plugin is a good plugin. So I'm going to type in short pixel. That's one of the plugins that we recommend using and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay, so I typed in short pixel in the search bar here and then it pulled up this short pixel image optimizer. Now there's a few things that I can look at here to tell me if this is a good plugin to use. So it says here there are 591 reviews, overall four and a half stars, 300,000 plus active installations. Now, believe it or not, that's a big reason or a big way to tell if a plugin is worthwhile or if it's really safe to use. If there are a lot of other people using it, it generally means that a lot of people have had a good experience with it. Another, maybe even more important element is this right here where it says last updated. So this plugin was last updated a week ago. You can see right here, the plugin next to it was updated 22 minutes ago. These are things that tell you whether a plugin or is good or not. Um, you might see, just looking here, this plugin was last updated three months ago. Um, so, you know, five days, one week, six months ago, seven months ago. So a plugin that's not being updated all the time is a plugin that is not being cared for by the creator. Um, as the internet evolves, there will become holes in the code. There will become um, places where you know, hackers could potentially get in. And if they're not constantly updating, then the plugin's probably not safe to use. So you want to find a plugin that has a lot of users and that is being updated frequently. If you do that, generally speaking, you're going to find good plugins to use. Um, again, just remember the site speed issue. I would recommend no more than five or six plugins on your website when you're just getting started because you don't need too much functionality. Uh, really what you need to do is write content. So go back to your plugins page uh, where it shows all of the plugins on your website. You can find that by going over to the left hand menu, clicking install the plugins. It's going to take you to a list and you can see here right off the bat when you set up your website, um, Bluehost goes and installs some plugins for you that they think that you need. The reality is you don't need all of the plugins they install. So you can see I have 10 plugins here. If I'm only looking for five, then I need to delete some. 
So up at the top here, there's an anti-spam plugin. We've tested a few anti-spam plugins. They're good to have if you're worried about spam. Um, we can leave that one for now. So it's active, you can leave it for now. There's the Bluehost plugin. And it will tell you what it does right here. This plugin integrates your WordPress site with the Bluehost control panel. You don't really need that because you can access the Bluehost control panel. All this is gonna do is slow down your site. So what I would do is I would deactivate it and then delete it. So click deactivate and then you can delete the plugin. The next plugin here on my list is Creative Mail by Constant Contact. I'm going to deactivate. Sometimes they're gonna ask you why you're deactivating and just click whatever you want and then deactivate the plugin. You'll want to go through this process with all of the plugins on your site. You need to read the description, see if it's something that you really need and then delete it. Um, you probably see similar plugins to what I'm seeing on my site. So this creative mail by Constant Contact, we're going to delete it. Google Analytics for WordPress by Monster Insights. We're going to delete that if you're using Akabato. Akabato, remember you already put the analytics code in the back end of your site. So you don't need an extra plugin doing the same thing. So delete the Monster Insights. Hello Dolly, delete. Jetpack by WordPress, delete. Um, the one-click demo import. Now that we've imported all of the info, we can deactivate and delete. Opt-in monster, delete. And then WP Forms Lite, deactivate and delete. The only plugin that we're going to have left on our site right now is the short pixel image optimizer and then the anti-spam plugin if you really want to keep that. And it, honestly speaking, it doesn't really matter if you do or not. Right now, those are the plugins that you need. Now, those are just two plugins. I said you could have up to five if you wanted. The reason I say that is because the Akabato theme does recommend a few plugins if you don't love the default settings. There's a plugin where you can add different fonts. If you don't love the Akabato fonts, you can add in different fonts. Is it really that important in the beginning? Probably not. Personally, I would hold off and not um, add this plugin. Lazy load for videos. This is going to help your site be a little bit faster, but in the beginning when you're not putting a ton of videos on your site, it's probably not that important. I would hold off on this one. There are a few other plugins that you're going to need. Um, and if there are any recommendations that we have additionally to what I've talked about in this video, we'll just put it in the text below the video so that you can uh, see exactly what plugins you'll need. And in the text, we'll say, you have to have this one if you have to have it. Or if it's just a recommendation or a suggestion, we'll let you know. And if it's just a suggestion, it means nothing bad is going to happen to your site if you don't use it. Our whole mantra with plugins is the fewer, the better. We don't want a lot of plugins on our site uh, because they're just cumbersome, they're large, they can cause security issues. But that's, that's it for plugins. I mean, you're ready to go create content on your site now. Congratulations on setting up your first site. It's a lot of work, uh, but it's well worth it. Don't get overwhelmed by all of the specifications and all of the settings on your site. You're going to learn it little by little as you work through the process of building your website.